Jazz Sports here. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. And let's get into it. Okay, you may notice that there's an ongoing debate. LeBron James versus um, Michael Jordan. I'm going to do this debate a little different. I'm going to compare them in the playoffs where it matters most. Um, what have they done and what are their numbers? Now, you're going to see a little difference here. And you're going to see, actually, they're not too far off. And this gives a great reason to why they are both deserve to be in the same conversation to be debating it. Okay? I'm going to start off with some of their numbers. Now, if you could look on top, you will see Jordan, 33.6 points a game. LeBron James, 28.2 points a game. So Jordan leads him in the scoring category. Then you got rebounding and assists. LeBron leads Jordan in that. He's at 10 uh, rebounds a game, 7.7 uh, assists a game. Jordan's at 6.0 on both assists and rebounds. Okay. Um, now LeBron James' playoff record is going to be a little bit different because he played longer. Jordan only played 13 seasons. Um, so LeBron's going to have a big um, winning, a little more of a winning um, difference between between the two because he played longer. But keep in mind, Jordan played 13 seasons with the Bulls, and those 13 seasons with the Bulls, um, he's never um, lost once he once he start um, after 91. Basically, he went took off the ground winning a little more. So Jordan's resume from 13 years is still more oppressive than LeBron's um, playoff career overall because um, it's more of a quality versus quantity thing. You know, LeBron has the quantity because he's been playing long, but Jordan has the quality. Even though it's a shorter amount of time, it's still a little more oppressive. So I'm going to give the edge to Michael Jordan in that. All right? Um, but that's no knock on LeBron. He's He's been... Um, awesome for this decade um, he didn't stop certain teams from winning championships but um, keep in mind that LeBron played in a different era where free agency was more rapid so guys was able to leave teams and make it more challenging for you to win this is what gives LeBron um, a little more of the edge because keep in mind when Jordan played in the 80s and 90s guys pretty much stayed on the same team they signed long-term contracts. Free agency wasn't as rapid, so they couldn't switch teams. So if you were one of the best teams, um, you were pretty much playing the same guy every single, the same team every single year. Um, that does play into factor because it's not like um, you know Hakeem Olajuwon signed a five-year deal with the Rockets and he got traded to the Knicks to play with Patrick Ewing. It wasn't like that. Um, you pretty much stayed on your team, whatever um, team you decided to play on. That was the team that you pretty much. Uh, got down with that was a team that you pretty much played with um, so that's a little bit different you know um, you you have to um, give LeBron credit in that field um, that's something that you can't overlook but nevertheless it is what it is you can only compare what what the two players did in each era right and Jordan still was more dominant when it comes to playoffs than LeBron in his era so you can't um, neglect that that fact all right now, my second one I want to get to is um, um, some of their performances. We're going to keep it in the playoffs, right? Um, I want to get to that player efficiency rating, right? Um, Jordan's player efficiency rating was 28.6. Check this out. LeBron's was 28.3, as you can see up there, all right? But that's not too far off. So their player efficiency rating was pretty good. And keep in mind, Jordan's shot. Uh, more than LeBron in the playoffs in terms of shooting the ball um, and uh, Jordan's efficiency rating is not that far off from LeBron so that's um, that's actually not too bad for LeBron you know he's hanging in there so to speak um, they uh, box plus minus LeBron loses the edge in that a little bit but only by sponge because he's at 11 um, I mean uh, Jordan's at 11 LeBron's at 10 sorry and um, their usage. Uh, Jordan shoots the ball more, so you know his usage, usage was going to be a little more. He's at 35%, LeBron's at 32 That's still not that off, you know. People always say LeBron's a ball-dominant player, which he is, um, but LeBron is great at controlling the pace of a game. Um, he could dictate the pace of a game, whether it's moving slow or fast. 
Um, Jordan, he doesn't dictate the place of a game, but he could blend into any style of a game. He could go fast or he could go slow. Um, and in his, later in his career in the 90s, he was actually, um, his team was actually controlling the pace because they made the game a little more slow with come playoff time. And you know, it was more of a tit for tat type of thing when it was going up against each other. Now, win shares is a little bit different. LeBron James at 51%. Um, Jordan is at um, 39.8. Keep in mind, Jordan played a little less um, than LeBron. So that's why that comes into play. But also, um, Jordan's first um, seasons got got hurt in the playoffs because he, was, he wasn't getting past these historic teams that he was playing against. Like um, the 86 um, Boston Celtics. I mean, Jordan went up against some of the best teams, arguably, in NBA history. You know, uh, the champion Pistons. Um, you know, he had to go up against those type of guys too as well. Um, true shooting, all right? Not too far off. LeBron at 57, Jordan at 56. Um, both were extremely efficient scorers, timely scorers, and effective scorers in the playoffs. Well, um, which is a fact, so you can't uh, dispute that. Um, it's actual a, a good a good stat that you could pit pit up to um, compare the two. You know, um, now who's I'm who I'm gonna give the edge to a little more? I'm gonna give the edge to um, Michael Jordan a little bit. All right, because um, he did this in the shortest uh, span of time, but um, this is just also showing you that LeBron James is able to hang in there. He's able to, um, you know go tit for tat with Jordan so to speak and he actually edged them in some categories but he edged them in some categories because it's all longevity based you know um, he's playing long but he's still hanging in there nevertheless okay the third category I want to talk about is clutch shots okay um, the ability to perform in clutch situations now keep in mind Performing clutch means what you do in the last five minutes of a game to help your team either take the lead, tie the lead, or um, put them in position to win, okay? That could be a rebound, that could be assist, that could be um, scoring, okay? So either tie, get the, um, get the lead, or keep your team within striking distance of winning, okay? That could lead clutches up. Uh, numerous amount of things could be a block a steal you know uh, all these players had different experience when it comes to uh, being clutch but as you can see boom Michael Jordan has three buzzer beaters in this case uh, LeBron has five okay um, LeBron is six for 13 Michael Jordan I believe is um, five for 11 all right so um LeBron has more buzzer beaters than Michael Jordan for the simple fact that he's been playing longer, okay? Um, Jordan has less, but keep in mind, um, he was so dominant during the playoff run, um, you know, a lot of times that he didn't go into a game seven. Um, LeBron has gone into game sevens more than Michael Jordan. Um, now, here's a good thing that you need to know, though. They both at damn near equal amount of clutch situations. LeBron, one point over, one percentage over with 46, Michael Jordan with 45. So this notion that LeBron James is not clutch, we could put that to rest right now because LeBron James has been clutch in the last five minutes of games and several um, games in the playoffs, I might add, okay? Um, now the narrative around it is that he doesn't show up in the clutch, you know, um, the narrative is the complete opposite for Jordan. It's oh that he takes over games in the fourth quarter, this and that. As you can see, the proof is right there in the pudding. Michael Jordan, LeBron James are basically equal, you know, when it comes to clutch situations. 45 to 46 is not much of a big edge. Okay? Um, so in this clutch situation, um, I'm gonna break them both even. You know, I say they both just as clutch. But at the end of the day, I do want Michael Jordan with the ball in his hands because he has a more scores mentality. So when it comes to winning, um, 
they both put you in winning situations, but uh, I still want the ball in Jordan's hands, but I want LeBron James to uh, orchestrate the play. I want him to um, get get um, his the best scorer on the team open to hit a game-winning shot, you know? Um, I think that's what he could best do. But um, that's not to say LeBron can't hit a clutch shot, as you can see, he can do it. He has done it, okay? Um, now, in playoffs, it's pretty much the same thing. The finals performances go the same way. Um, Jordan, 33.6. LeBron James, 28.2. LeBron James is in double digits and rebounds and assists. 10. Oh, not sorry. Not um, not um, double digits and assists. He's set 7.7, right? As you can see up there on the board. I highlighted um, some of the key things LeBron does. It's still equaling up to an all-around game. 28. Uh, 10 and 7 all right that's his finals record um, that he performs in the finals right uh, Michael Jordan 33 6 and 6 as you can see that's posted on top of the um, their field goal percentage is damn near the same they both very extremely efficient scorers on the floor LeBron James 47 Michael Jordan 48 this is comparable okay this is unlike um, Kobe's numbers in all of these categories are low compared to LeBron James and Kobe, uh, and Michael Jordan. So for somebody to say LeBron James can't be compared to Michael Jordan, that's that's a false narrative. They can, okay? Their playoff records, as you can see, is not too far off, okay? Um, minutes per game, Jordan, 43. Um, LeBron James, um, 42. I'm in a difference, okay? So they're not splitting hairs. Uh, it's not like a mild difference between the two when it comes to uh, their playoff differences. All right. Now, I'm going to give the edge to Jordan because Jordan likes to score more. And I think in the fact that he likes to score and he dominates the other end of the floor too as well, you know, um, I'd rather go with um, Jordan. LeBron James is a very talented player that could do a multi uh multiple things, right? A multitude of different things on the court. But take in mind that sometimes he gets confused, not he doesn't know when to take the game over, when to start passing, when to do a playmaking decision, when to get down on defense. You know, it's basically um doing too much, you know. Um is basically going overboard. Um at least with Jordan, I know that I'm going to get a two-way situation, defense and offense. So I'd rather take that. But for those of you that disagree, it's all good. Because as you can see, the numbers don't lie. And it's in the proof. Peace.